morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out in the crowd. Um, we welcome all of you here, and we extend a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us today. I would invite our ushers, if you wouldn't mind, to pass along some of our fellowship hats. If you could sign these so we know who it is who's here in worship with us this morning. Um, we do have a few announcements for you this morning as we begin worship. Um, the first of which is that uh, our regular afternoon and evening programs will not happen today. Um, we hope everyone goes and spends some good quality time with mothers or people who have served as mother figures for you in your lives. Um, we, as we look at the schedule coming uh, up this week, we have our regular study groups tomorrow. Um, on Thursday night, you are all invited, those of you who are interested in um, knitting, crocheting, learning more about our prayer shawl ministry, to come and join the crew that gathers together the third Thursday of the month at six o'clock. Um, you will note that there are a couple of prayer shawls that are up here on the sides of our communion table. Those were blessed during our 8.30 worship this morning, but we wanted you all to have an opportunity to see them because they really are beautiful. Um, our prayer shawls don't just stay here or only go to people in our church. We have mailed them to places far and wide. Um, we have had people grab them and bring them to friends or to family members who are in need. Um, so please, if you know of someone in your life who, for whom it would be good to uh, be wrapped in some prayers of a community of care and concern, um, do let us know, because we would love to be able to share those um, with people who are in need of them. Um, quick note about next Sunday's worship services. Um, our 8.30 service will look very much like our 8.30 service always does. Um, our 10.30 service next Sunday is confirmation. Um, we have eight wonderful confirmants who have been working um, very hard over this year um, to try and figure out where they are on their faith journey. They will confirm their faith and join the church through the rite of confirmation next week at the 10.30 service. So just a note that that service will probably be a bit fuller than usual. Um, there isn't a regular sermon. We use the kids kind of expressing their faith as that piece of worship. Um, so if you're looking for a more traditional service, we invite you to head to 830. And if you are looking for an opportunity to celebrate with our confirmands, we invite you to come and join us at our 1030 service of worship next Sunday. Um, on May 22nd, we are inviting, um, welcoming once again, our Brookfield High School Special Chorus among us for their spring concert. Um, first of all, we invite all of you to come and join us for that. They are an amazingly talented group of young folks. Um, and if you are somebody who enjoys baking, then we are looking for cookies because they are an amazingly talented group of young folks who are always really hungry at the end of their concert. So um, if you are a baker, then we invite you to come and drop cookies off for us um, either at worship next Sunday or on Monday um, during the day as well. Um, a couple more quick notes from me and then I'm gonna turn it over to Ben Ronan. Um, but for, so first, um, today after worship, um, our SYF, I, I'm wait, awaiting our SYF stock sellers um, who said they would be here today, although I'm looking at Ashley and maybe you're willing, Ashley. Um, but uh, our uncommon stock sale begins today. So if you are somebody who um, wishes to support our SYF mission team on our way to Boston, um, then we will have people down in Fellowship Hall after worship who um, are selling shares of uncommon stock. Um, you can also pay with push pay. However, we need to make sure that we have your information, your name, your address, because we do shout outs from the road and we send postcards to people to let them know what we're doing on mission trip. Um, so we need to make sure that we have that information. Um, today is the deadline for Book of Remembrance gifts. So if you are looking to make a donation for Book of Remembrance, we invite you to take a look at that blurb in your bulletin today and make sure that that information um, gets into the church office. And tomorrow is your Crossways deadline. Um, it's the Crossways for June, July, and August. Um, so if you have something that someone needs to know about this summer, then make sure that that information gets into Janine in the church office as well and she will make sure that it gets printed in our crossways. And now, Ben, are you ogling a baby? I'm like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> here you go, Ben. Hello, it's Ben Ronan again. Um, just here to talk about my confirmation project. It's the Memorial Day Parade in two weeks. Um, if the kids want to help set up, they'll have to be there at 12 o'clock. Um, Mr. Line will have the sign-up sheet after church. 
And then is there anything? Sure. Uh, just a few more details. Uh, two weeks from today, May 28th, the parade steps off at 2 o'clock. We're going to have the trailer uh, up at the high school at noon, so we can't, we'll decorate it there uh, in the parking lot at the high school in the teacher parking lot area. Uh, if you are eighth grade or over, uh, you can drop the kids off there, uh, and we will make sure that they're all attended for uh, while we do the decorating. And the parade steps off again at two. It lasts about an hour. Uh, there's a memorial service that stops at Williams Park, so there's a little bit of a delay there. And then we finish at Center School, so you can pick up the kids there. Uh, we'll have the sign-up sheet after church today. I'll hold on to that. And uh, I think that, that about does it. Okay, hey, that good? All right. <laughs> There you go, Compromands and Mentors in Action, friends, right there. There you have it. Oh, Sally Barkowitz. Hi, I'm one of the fair chairs, and um, the fair booth chairs should have gotten an email from me if you did not let me know. Um, we're going to have a quick meeting after church next week to kind of touch base. I don't know how many days there are until the fair. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements? Things for the good of the order. Then let us take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Please join me now in our responsive call to worship. Seek refuge in your creator, a strong fortress to save us. We trust in the Lord and say, you are my God. The Lord's face shines upon us. God's abundant goodness surrounds us. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to us.
Let us continue now in our unison prayer of approach. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for rejoicing with us in our joy and mourning with us in our grief and extending your presence to us like a refreshing river. You promise to care for us, comfort us, and feed us as a mother comforts her child. Open our hearts to you in this time of worship that our bodies and spirits may flourish like the grass, and the world will know your tender hand is with us, your servants. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the children to come up for the children's sermon. Is there a hand mic? Hi, I'm Maddie, and this year in Alleluia Choir, we have sung a lot of songs about peace, including the one we just sung. And in April, some of our choir members participated in a choir festival in Bridgeport. The theme of the final concert was peace. Kids were asked to share their thoughts on what peace meant to them. Ashley and Scarlett shared their thoughts, and they would like to share them with you today. 
Hi. When you have peace, you know you will feel calm. There are many places to find peace, but you will have much peace when you have God in your heart. What is peace? Peace is the joy and happiness found in others and with God. Peace is calm and fills your heart with warmth. Many people feel peace in different ways. Maybe you feel peace when you're alone and in a quiet environment, or maybe when you're surrounded by others. When you think of peace, you probably think of no war, but peace goes deeper than that. God is peace. He fills, he fills the world with joy and our hearts with love. When you hear choirs sing about peace, really think about what peace means to you. May peace be with you. From the mouths of babes, right? So boys and girls, you know, Jesus wants us to have peace too. And this morning I was thinking about that, and I wrote down a scripture, one of my favorites, and then I looked in the bulletin, and there it was at the top of the bulletin. And this is what Jesus said. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So let's end with a prayer. Dear God, we pray together today for peace peace for this world, and peace in our own hearts. Help us to feel your peace as we go throughout our daily lives, and help us to spread that peace to others. Amen. So now you can go to your Sunday school classes.
be seated. This morning's scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 5, and verses 9 and 10. But before I read, let us pray. O oh God, still in us every voice except for yours, that upon hearing your word, we will obey it. Amen. Hear the word. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God bless to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts as we gather to worship you today, may it all be acceptable and even pleasing to you, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. Congratulations, all you kings and queens. You are a royal priesthood. I don't know that any of us ever quite feels that way. It happened to me just yesterday, once again, I went on a visit to Danbury Hospital and I went to just double check on Sandy Bouton's room number at the front desk and um, as fate would have it, being vertically challenged, my chaplain's badge was below the uh, level of the counter. <laughs> and I didn't realize this, so the gentleman who um, gave me the room number, um, even though I had said, you know, I have a parishioner here and I'm visiting, he apparently didn't hear that. And he goes, ma'am, 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 you can't go in without your badge. And I said, well, I, I still, I have my chaplain's badge. And he goes, oh, I am so sorry. You don't look at all like a priest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, this is why I love my new gold stole. <laughs> a royal priest now I am. But this is a shocking passage to us as ordinary Christians, is it not? that we are called to be royal ambassadors for the Prince of Peace himself. It's maybe more than we signed up for if we joined the church or if we just, you know, are visiting our mom for the day. Maybe I didn't sign up for this. Our poor compromands, right? They're going to be um, confirmed next Sunday. I doubt they were thinking when they did so they were taking royal orders. And yet, how might this change our way of looking at our mission as a church and even at our own lives if we saw ourselves through this lens of how important the work we're doing, how important this work that Tony does, teaching these children these songs, implanting in them deep within hopes and dreams of peace. What fruit may it bear in the future? I think it's um, some comfort 
that this passage about royal priesthood and about being living stones in the body of Christ, the foundation of the church, that it comes in the letter of Peter. You remember Peter, the fisherman disciple who denied Jesus three times, and yet Jesus says to him, on this rock, I will build my church. <sighs> he must have been beginning his ministry with a little bit of discouragement. And so he speaks from a place of knowledge as he writes this letter. Now, I have to say, First of all, as a biblical scholar, um, because of various things that I won't get into here, most people think this letter came around 100 AD, not actually written by Peter. Peter, who we were pretty sure was illiterate, even says at the end of the letter that his secretary, Sylvanus, wrote the letter. Some people believe, yes, he dictated it. Most people, because of historical data, think it might have been written by followers of Peter, but certainly in the spirit of Peter, and it's certainly with that sense of what people knew of Peter being the rock on which the church was built. It was written, though, they think, during this time of Pliny the Younger, who was the governor under the Emperor Trajan um, around that time in what is now northern Turkey, with then Asia Minor, and we know so much about it, scholars have gotten excited about it because um, Pliny the Younger apparently wrote his first play uh, when he was 14. He was a tremendous writer, did a lot of writing, and so some of what he wrote um, during that time was letters to back to Rome asking for instruction and clarity on how precisely to prosecute Christians under Roman law. You know, should they get, should children just confirmed get the death penalty, for instance? These were his reasoned um, discussions that he wrote about. So these were difficult times that these first Christians were living under. There were, um, where Christianity was illegal. It was a world where uh, Caesar ruled with totalitarian control, where might made right, where royalty was literally worshipped. Royalty was literally worshipped. It was a crime of sedition punishable by death if you did not worship Caesar as your god. Into that world, to hear as a slave, a new Christian just baptized worshipping in secret in that part of Asia Minor, you are a royal priesthood. These are not any small words. The, the royal ambassadorship was an idea that the Southern Baptist Convention took hold of. And they have their young men's youth group. They're called RAs, or royal ambassadors, which is you know, actually kind of a lovely thought that they're sending them out into the world on a mission. They have a girls group as well, the GAs. And, they, um, and when they're in high school, they're youth on a mission. And how similar, really, that is to what we do when we send our youth out on a mission. This is a, this is a difficult world that we live in, even though we are not persecuted, perhaps, as um, seriously as they were back in ancient Rome. We still um, fight to, um, to name and claim the importance of being ambassadors for peace. What a sacrifice, what sacrifices then are we called to make? How does it change to think of ourselves this way? Well, I think Peter says you can do it with God's help because you don't have to start your journey as the hero. You don't, Hercules started out as a baby. So what I love about this passage is that it tells us that um, our faith is a journey, it is a process. And that's what some of our confirmands said to us that they loved about the way that Jennifer um, taught the class, that they learned that you're confirming your faith doesn't mean you're there, that you have now arrived, but rather you're saying yes to being on the way 
to being on the road of learning and growing and, and receiving spiritual food in this place and from our brothers and sisters to strengthen us, to help us grow into our call. This is a big deal to um, have to raise up a royal priesthood. You've heard me use that phrase so often that we are raising the next greatest generation of the faithful. It's important, it's frightening, and yet we can do it with God's help. So I wanted to share with you a story of daring that I think will probably be a lot like the Boston mission trips that we have done. When I was doing youth ministry in the San Francisco Bay Area, we were in a suburban um, town, a, you know, a 30 minute train ride away from the big city and subway ride. And, uh, and the chair of our CE committee, like me, had once lived in San Francisco and had worked with some of our United Church of Christ ministries in downtown. And so we um, started a program of going Christmas caroling in the tenderloin of San Francisco with the youth every year, which was somewhat daunting, but there was a HUD housing project that the UCC um, worked on there in that neighborhood, and they would, of course, welcome us, and they had a wonderful courtyard, you know, in a high rise on three sides, there would be um, residents, but we also strolled through the streets. And this is a neighborhood with a lot of panhandlers, a lot of, um, let's just say, the world's oldest profession. There were several, um, kind of, it was a little not the finest neighborhood in San Francisco. And um, yet, year after year, we went out to shine the light of Christ in that neighborhood. Well, the year that it almost didn't happen was a year of a really major blackout in San Francisco. And it had happened the night um, before, I think, that we were to go caroling. And so um, that Sunday in church, it was like, of course, we're not going to go. And especially because there was some um, um, kind of protest murmuring going on in the neighborhood that we were going to because, like most poor, the poorest of the poor neighborhoods, they were the last ones to get their electricity restored. The people with the less, least power got the least power. <laughs> So um, there was some worry about it. And I said, no, this is why. We must go this year. We have to go, even if it's dark. We'll take flashlights. I had a youth leader who put on, oh, yes, it was a Pete McPadden. You know, we had reflective tape, you know, for bike. I still have that stuff stuck to my best raincoat because it never came off. But, you know, he's going around and he's taping us all up with big X's. Kind of like Christ, huh? Like the big X's so that the, the traffic wouldn't hit us if we, you know, were out caroling in the dark. And I tell you, there was never a year like that. Because, guess what? Nobody had any power. They were bored. A lot of the times we stood in that courtyard and we see like one face at the window because all the rest of them were, you know, watching TV with the volume on too high and didn't even know we were there. This one year was like, it was a face at every window looking down at us, my little youth group, with our little flashlights and our reflective tape, singing Christmas carols, royal ambassadors for Christ out in the world. This is such important work that we are doing, that we forget it at our peril. We are, what does it say? We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, called out to proclaim the mighty acts of God, the one who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is still our call. Next week, we confirm another group to go out and to shine that light. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen.
friends, will you join with me now in our preparation for prayer? As we come to our time of gathered prayer, I would remind you of the names that are printed on the backs of your bulletins for reasons of concern and invite you to keep those folks in your prayers uh, today and in the days ahead. Um, we do have some people to add to that list of concerns. We're praying for Dave Ryan today, who's in the hospital, um, having treatments and testing for some breathing issues for Sandy Belton um, in the hospital recovering from back surgery, Carlos Santi, who is at home, but also recovering from a surgery this past Friday. Um, for John Markowitz, who was in a car accident, and for Sue Washak, um, she requested prayers for her parents, um, who are aging and having a difficult time accepting the help that they need. Um, and so she was hoping um, that you might surround them with some prayers for guidance and wisdom in the days ahead. Um, not necessarily a prayer of concern, although we wish her very safe travels and an amazing week. Um, we are praying today for Carrie Colombo, who is working um, out in South Dakota with Simply Smiles um, to, this week. Uh, she left yesterday, Carlo, is that right? Um, and we'll be there um, through next weekend. And so we are praying for her and for all of those who are with her who are doing that good work out there. Um, on the joyful side of the Washak family, uh, Kyle Bond was married yesterday um, to his longtime girlfriend, Cameron. Um, and so Sue and Steve are down in North Carolina celebrating with them. Um, it's a wonderful joy. I was talking to someone earlier, right? I see faces go, oh my goodness, he's not old enough. It's impossible that Kyle Bond could be married. Um, but, uh, but he is, and he is married. So congratulations to Kyle. Um, you will note the flowers that are on um, the table this morning um, are <laughs> come from the Salem Elementary School plant sale um, that I got to run on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but they are in honor of all of you mothers and mother figures who have um, been so important in our lives um, throughout our journeys. Um, we, I am so excited, like I'm looking out and I'm seeing all of our college students and young adult faces and you make my heart sing and that's a wonderful thing. Um, we, uh, Kate, it's great to have you back from Spain, welcome home. Um, and, uh, and lots of college graduates, we know that now is the time, right? So last weekend, uh, some of our folks graduated and in these weekends um, coming up, um, Summer Hogan Boom is traveling to Europe tomorrow. She graduated from UConn last weekend and she's traveling to Europe tomorrow for um, a little while. And then she just got the good news that when she comes back, she will be um, a research fellow in Puerto Rico um, for part of the rest of the summer. So, um, so just prayers for safe travels for her and a wonderful experience as she comes back. Um, prayers of joy for our youth fellowship groups who were able to work last weekend with um, other youth fellowship groups from our area on um, an environmental project, a town beach cleanup in Danbury. And um, Bryn has mentioned our Compromands. Um, next week we get to celebrate with them this journey that they have been on. So our Compromands and their mentors. Um, I'm looking at Silvana, who's sitting out in, in Brooks Hall. If you have an opportunity after worship today, Silvana um, painted a mural as her confirmation project on the way up into the choir room. Um, so please take a look at it. She did an absolutely beautiful job. Um, we have another number of other of our Compromands who are working on their projects, who have already joined committees, who are going on mission trip with us. I mean, these are good folks that you are helping to raise in this place. So thank you so much for all of your hard work with them too. Um, and I know that many of you come with other thoughts, names, prayers on your hearts and in your minds. So for whom else shall we pray today? Pam prayers for Pam and Patsy today. Yeah, Barb. Prayers for Catherine and Nicole. Yeah, Nancy. John and Donna. John and Donna. Yeah, Nancy. And anybody whose heart is broken on Mother's Day. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. So Nancy um, just said, just prayers for those who, for whom Mother's Day is a really tough time. Um, whether you have lost a child or a mother or have other situations in your life that make it very difficult, we wanna make sure that we're surrounding you all with prayer too. Thanks, Nancy. For Craig and Lisa? Yeah, Dave. Gotcha, for Dave's dad, who's starting treatment this week. Other names, lots of prayers. Continued prayers for Marilyn, of course, yeah. For Amy's mother, who's moving yeah. from upstate to New Milford in two weeks. I was gonna say, yeah, so Amy D'Alessandro's mom is moving very nearby, which is a good thing, a blessing. Um, she's moving to New Milford, so hopes that that transition goes well, of course. Yeah. Tom. Laura and Bill for healing. Prayers for Laura and Bill for healing, yeah. Like, <laughs> yay, me babies, I love me babies. Um, so, <laughs> um, so prayers for Rocky, prayers for Pete's birthday. And um, I know, Sam, I looked back and I was like, wait, that's Sam McFadden, but with no hair, you look great. Welcome home. <laughs> um, Sam, we prayed for last week is getting ready to go embark on an adventure um, in Ghana, is that right? Um, over the summer as she builds a sustainable artist village there um, with a number of volunteers. So it's wonderful to have you back with us. Yeah, go for it. Prayers for Matt and uh, for Pat and Diane today. Other names? Oh, that's prayers. Yeah, go. Oh, yeah, so prayers for Ansem, who is starting um, chemo next week for a brain tumor. Definitely. Yeah. For prayers for Steve and Carol, whose parents are in the hospital at this time for their family. Yeah, hey, what's going on? Yay, oh, prayers of joy for Michael and Alexander for, on their engagement. Yeah, definitely, Roy. I'm concerned and joy for my sister, who's uh, five years younger than I am. She's recently been diagnosed with dementia. Oh, yeah. And uh, on the joyous side, Oh, yay! So happy birthday to you, Roy, definitely. And prayers for Roy's sister, who's just been diagnosed with dementia. Yeah, go for it, Meredith. Um, for Kevin and his parents, Papa and Jenny, um, he is in three-year-old children's home. Um, they're going to be going to Ghana for two weeks. Oh, yeah. So for Audra and Jim, whose um, young son, three-year-old son Kevin, has just been diagnosed with a, a very fatal disease. Yeah, definitely. Prayers, go for it. Yeah, so prayers for Kay's dad, who's having some medical testing done, definitely, in and on the hospital. Other thoughts, prayers to be lifted up today? And let us join our hearts and our souls, friends, in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, we thank you once again for this opportunity to gather as a family of faith. We thank you so much that you have called us together as brothers and sisters in this place, whether we have just appeared today or whether we have been coming for years, you have drawn us together for a reason, for a purpose, for a mission. We thank you so much that we are able to share these things that are lying on our hearts today. We are grateful for the joys, for birthdays and weddings and engagements and opportunities to send folks out into the world to do amazing work and opportunities to celebrate the fact that people are home. We are praying today, though, God, for all of those for whom today is a day of difficulty and challenge, whether because of a loss or because of an illness, for issues that we may never know or understand because they are dealing with new diagnoses, God, we pray that you would give us the words or the strength of presence to walk that journey with them, that we might be able to help them know and understand your presence, your healing, your love that surrounds them. God, we thank you for those who have gone before us, who have gone before us and who have provided an example of who we are called to be as people of faith on this journey of ours. And we thank you for the ways that we learn 
from our children, whether birth children or children here in this church as they give their testimony to what it means to have you in their lives. We thank you that you offer us the space to ask questions, to offer up honest and real questions, to have doubts and to listen, to open ourselves up to the way that you are still speaking to us, either through the words of friends or family or people that we may meet for just a fleeting moment. And God, we pray that you would help us not to be insulated, to just think about ourselves or this place, but to be open to the ways that you call us to serve in the world beyond as well. Help us to do honor to the gospel, serving you and others as the hands and feet and eyes and minds and hearts of the body of Christ helping to change the darkness of the world to your marvelous light through our words and our actions. We pray all of this in your most holy name. Amen. And now, friends, we have the great opportunity to hear a bit from Amy D'Alessandro, who will share our call to share today. Yeah. Um, I'm Amy D'Alessandro. I love my church because we have a place. Not a building per se, but a spot, a space, and a home here. I realize this every time I see my kids running in the courtyard with their little tribe and they're playing on the rock. And I always think about how many generations have played on the rock. And they're with their peeps on the rock. And it's safe, and it's comfy and peaceful, and they're exploring all at the same time. And for me, I've also found my peeps on my rock here. I joined this church a few years ago. I was invited to, and I chose it. And when I did, I joined in all the different works of the church, committees, retreats, teaching, fellowship events, book study, CE workshops, the fair. And even more transformative in my life was the way the church chose me. It seeped into my works and my world. Turns out, I invited God, this holy family and the spirit to join me in my path and my work, my work as a mother, as a wife, as a volunteer, as a daughter, and as a neighbor. And all the lines for me as to who joined what are really blurry now. For me, it's all a little bit brighter, a little bit more hopeful, a little more joyful and a little bit more peaceful. And now with the love, hope, and joy that is in my heart and hopefully yours, let us offer our support to the ministry of this church.
Friends, will you join with me in our offertory prayer? Good and gracious God, we thank you for the powerful, still speaking voice of your Holy Spirit, which calls us to give and to serve together. We pray for your blessing today upon these offerings, the gifts of our time, talents, and treasure that make it possible to share so many ministries in this community and beyond. Help us continue extending your spirit of abundant love and extravagant welcome with the world. In Christ's name, amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with loving kindness and grant you peace. Amen. Friends, we do invite you to come down and join us for a wonderful fellowship time hosted by our church house committee. And we and also invite you, blessed by the peace of Christ, to share a sign of that peace with one another and bring those signs out into the world. The peace of Christ be with you all.